and an honor to be here this evening with such honored athletes and some great chosen people as far as the people that have been here this evening. I started off with the Forestville Little League in 1957. The only problem with my start in the Forestville Little League is that I got cut from the Forestville Little League. <laughs> I could not make my Forestville Little League team. I went on the next year. I was not a type of player that would give up and give up easily. I retried out the following year, did make the ball club, and that was due to Bob Watson and Dick Lug. They were my coaches and gave me the opportunity, the first opportunity, to make an organized baseball team. It went from there, where I've got a person right next to me, Bob Montgomery. Bob and I used to play wiffle ball together as kids. And believe it or not, and this is fact, that wiffle ball career, as I will call it, taught me how to hit a curveball. And to this day, I have a 13-year-old son, and that's the way I'm teaching him to hit a curveball. From, uh, from my Little League days, I went on to Pony League Baseball with Benny Brzezicki, who was an excellent coach. I went on at that point to probably one of the highlights of my baseball career, and that's my American Legion baseball career. I started off with Dick Love, went on where Jim Bates and Rick Kowalczyk took over the ball club. And these people made and helped Tom Shope out. I can remember I was sort of a, a fiery ball player. I'll use the term fiery. To some people, it may be a temper. I had that will and want to win. And I can remember we were having a scrimmage game between ourselves. Jim Bates, again, was the uh, manager. Uh, a ground ball was hit the center field. I abruptly turned around as the ball was coming to me and fielded it between my legs facing the opposite way, just messing around. Promptly, Jim Bates took me out of that game and benched me for four innings of the next game, an official game, a league game. I never did it again. I learned, don't be cocky. Listen to people, listen to your coaches. I went on to play freshman baseball with John Petke. I went on to play high school baseball with Clem Roy and also uh, at that point uh, with Clem Roy I can remember I'm just getting back to some stories where we were talking about before Clem Roy was coaching third base I had hit a ball in the gap Clem was around third base I was rounding third base and uh, he holds me up at third base and I looked at him saying to myself, uh-uh, I'm going. I ran right through Clem Roy, did get a home run out of it. He came over to me right away and said, hey, did you see me hold you up? And I said, never saw you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, elementary school also, I played with uh, Al Lorenzetti in elementary school. And, and there's one person in this room that also helped me along, and, and she really doesn't realize it. She let me play softball during lunch hour. And this was my sixth grade teacher. And her name at that time was Miss Pease. And this is ironic now, but then she got married maybe two months into that school year. And her name changed to Mrs. Josephson. The mother of the Josephson sisters was my sixth grade teacher. <laughs> you know, there's some great company up here with the athletes that are being honored this evening. And one person that I never really got a chance to say something about, which I was always proud to be with, proud to be on a team with, thought this guy was just the greatest competitor in the world, and in my opinion, a class guy 
a great person and a good friend that I haven't seen for 30 years. And he's here this evening, and it made my night, Gary Palladino. is my wife Debbie sitting out there. I only wish that she could have been a part of this and been in Bristol with me for the first 20 years of my life when I went through all of this with you people. She'll be with me for the rest of my life, which I'm very happy of, but I wish she could have shared that with me. But you people are the people that make these athletes. You people are the greatest fans and the good, the good people of Bristol that helped people like me to get where I am. Yes, I became a Major League Baseball player. Yes, I played seven years in the Major Leagues. Yes, I was in a World Series. But I like to share it with you. You people, you made me proud. If I, if I, if you, if I made you proud, you made me even prouder. And I'm pleased to be a part of this city and a part of you. The last people are my parents who are sitting out here. They guided me, they helped me, they let me think on my own. My dad let me make decisions on my own. As far as even to sign a professional baseball contract, it's up to you, it's your decision. He never pushed me, he never was a, a parent that went up to coaches and talked to coaches to try to get you on a team. He was in the background. The same thing with my mom. They were there for me. I know they loved me, and I love them very much. And people like them and people like you make an award like this all worthwhile. Sometimes I don't think I'm worthy of it. I will cherish this plaque for the rest of my life. And you people, again, thank you very much, the fans and the people of Bristol, Connecticut. I love you all.